You've probably heard the same before. Look what the cat dragged in. Well, look what I just found. This is an old monochrome. It's a Zenith data system unit. And I mean, it, it, it came to me with no back on it, so <laughs> no screws in it. But um, let's take a see when this was uh, made. This is pretty old, this thing. Um, geez, I can't even read the date on this thing. Probably 1981, maybe. Let's see if you can see it with the camera. It's uh, 84, maybe? November 1984. Okay. So, I didn't even know where this thing was made. Made in Taiwan. It's going to be a monochromatic uh, monitor. It, it probably has a, a yellow screen. Just the fact that this is in yellow, it probably is a, an amber tube. On the back of this thing here, but what's interesting is it's got a gold star CRT on it, and I, I look up that number, a Type 310 KSB4M. And it's got an L. And the L stands for long persistence phosphorus. So what that means is that it's designed for text display. One of the early complaints with VDTs or video display terminals was that flicker caused eye strain for the operators. This would have probably been used at some point on a uh, either a, well, obviously a computer terminal of some type but it was probably used in word processing or some type of data display what I find interesting is the input it says characters 40 and 80 there's a, there's a control here there's a width control and it just has a video input so I'm going to plug this thing into the video output from my Raspberry Pi clock generator and we'll see whether this thing actually if this thing actually works I don't know whether it's gonna even have a picture but let's turn it on and see if this thing even shows anything well it has something I wonder if any of these controls work there's some controls down here for Okay, that's, that one would be vertical, I think. I don't know if there's a horizontal hole control or not. That, one of these is probably brightness. Okay, this thing's way off frequency, as you can see. There we go. Oh, there's a horizontal hole right there. Cool. So this thing actually does work. I don't know what these other controls do. They might be size. Let's just see if we can adjust this then picture looks to be a little bit off here. That's actually not a half bad picture. So the control on the back, 40 and 80 characters, exact, that's exactly what it does. It changes the, the horizontal um, width. This control back here appears to be broken. Yeah, the, the control is broken. Um, I don't know whether I can adjust this coil or not. That might only have been for the uh, Uh, it's for the 80 characters. Uh, the 40 characters, it doesn't do anything. I'm just putting a screwdriver into the coil because the um, iron core of the screwdriver will change the uh, will change the characteristics of this little coil. But uh, I want to see if I can enlarge this picture at all. Actually, I think this might be the vertical size here. Oh yeah, that's the vertical size control right there. So we have a looks like a brightness. Or is that a contrast? That one is horizontal, I know that much. Locks in quite nice, actually. I don't quite know what these controls do. They appear to be... Take a close look at that. Actually, the brightness control is actually on the back. It's actually, there's a couple controls on the back here. There's B plus adjust. Here's a, I guess this is a CRT bias control. You can crank it up or you can turn it down. 
I'm just gonna turn this thing down so that just the time shows. So there it is. I turned the brightness down. Now you can see how the you can see this long persistence tube. You see as the numbers are fading out there, the phosphorus glow, continues to glow for a few seconds after the uh, after the beam is extinguished and moved on to the next character. That was a special tube that was designed, and that was for VDT operators that were complaining of eye fatigue from the flickering. So that's how computer manufacturers uh, responded. I, I don't think this is the original tube. In fact, I can almost guarantee that that's not the original tube for this monitor because I'm pretty sure when this monitor was new, it had an amber, either had a green or an amber tube. That was common of that era. The monochrome screens were either amber or green. Somebody at some point has changed that tube and uh, they've put a white tube in which is kind of which makes this kind of a rarity to have one of these zenith data system monitors that's supposed to have a yellow tube i'm going to hang on to this just because this is kind of a unique piece it's it would be it would be quite rare to find something like this with an aftermarket white tube in it one thing i'm curious about on this thing is uh how long this thing will glow when I turn off the power. Yeah, yeah. a few seconds. Kind of cool. Inside on this thing, it's not too bad. It's a typical, uh, this is like a little black and white monitor, right? There's nothing fancy about this thing. You've got your flyback transformer over here. You've got your main power transformer over here, so everything's isolated. It runs on, it probably runs on about 12 volts, maybe 24, but main power goes in, goes into an, uh, into an isolation transformer. That's the output that feeds the circuit, so everything's on really low voltage on this thing, except for the high voltage circuit, of course, everything's stepped up there. Looks like somebody's recapped this thing. These, these green capacitors here don't look original. Looks like that one, that one, we say three, four, looks like about six capacitors were fixed on this thing at some point when, it's, when, it, when it was in its service life. One thing I've noticed is that the, um, the rail for the circuit board is missing on one side, so I don't know if this thing's been dropped or something. I'm just going to put the back on it and try and find some screws, get this thing back together so it doesn't get broken. Here's a good reason to keep screws when you scrap something. The anchors on these where the screws went through have all been broken, but if I put a screw on that's got one of these large washers on it, I'll thread into the plastic and the large washer will uh, squeeze up against what remains of the mount and secure the back. So I found a bunch of screws to put in the back of this thing including one to hold on the video connector. Now this thing's back as good as new. And there we go, back together and there we have our working monitor complete with our wide narrow switch. I can see a little bit of burn in here. Can't quite read it, but it looks like it looks like text lines. So this monitor in its life was being used as a text display for something. One thing I noticed is that the uh, display is not quite straight, and that will bug me. So this is going to straighten the yoke up a bit here and make sure that the display is perfectly level, because that'll drive me absolutely crazy.